Hey, what's happening guys? So, you got yourself a new scope. Maybe Santa brought it, maybe you bought it for yourself. Either way, congratulations. What we're going to talk about today is how to set up your new scope. I seem to be having trouble getting my camera to sit where I want. That's not bad. Anyway, this video will apply to just about any modern digital storage oscilloscope. We're doing it on the Regal uh, 1054Z today, but that really doesn't matter. So get your scope uh, unpacked, let it sit in your house for a couple hours so that the temperatures start to match, and then power it up. It'll take a few seconds for these new scopes to go through their uh, boot up period because they are software based devices. Yes, there's a lot of hardware in there, but there is an operating system running. Usually it's a Linux based system. You can see the lights flashing on. I can hear relays clicking. And the scope should be up and running in just a minute. There we go. So, once you have your scope up and running, the first thing that you're wanted, going to want to do is an auto calibration so find your system or utility menu and somewhere on there system ground unless we just have to find it here utility menu there we go self cow so we're gonna hit the self cow it says disconnect everything from all inputs and then hit start now, depending on your scope, this can take anywhere from 2 minutes to 45 minutes. So, go get yourself a cup of coffee or something, hit start, and come back when it's done. Okay, self-calibration is done. And you either had to restart the scope or not, depending on the model of the scope. It really doesn't matter. The next thing we need to do is take a look at our probes and compensate them. And let me show you what I mean by compensating the probes. They're, they are more than just a wire with a probe at the end. The inside of your probes actually looks something like this. You know, there's your coax wire. Coming out the back, we have your signal and ground wire going to the scope. Coming out the front, we have your probe wire and your ground antenna. And there's a 1 meg resistor and a capacitor in parallel there and a tunable capacitor on the back that allows you to compensate the probe to your particular scope so that you get the proper looking waveforms. So unpack your scopes and inside the package here you're going to find one of these little adjustment tools. It has a flat blade on one end and sort of an uh, inverted four bladed thing on the other end. So we're going to need one of those then you're going to want to do this for each and every one of your probes. The first thing I would recommend doing is getting out those little colored discs. Put one on the probe and one on the connection. Same color. And then you're going to match that up. Well, you can't see what I'm pointing at. Match that up to the colors that are on your scope. Now when you're doing the compensation, I, just, I would just plug them all into channel one. It really doesn't matter. But this way you know where everything goes. So then we're going to take our ground lead. It goes, in this case, on the bottom. You can see it'll, t it'll tell you ground and signal. And then our signal lead goes on the top. And you can see we have a signal here. So don't get all over me for this. Just hit the auto button. At this point, that's the easiest way to do it takes a couple seconds and you get a waveform. Now this is outputting a one kilohertz wave at this 500 millivolts. So what are we looking at peak to peak here? One, two, three, four, five, six, six times five, 30. So that's three volts peak to peak. But if you look up here, you can see that the waveform is not quite flat and same at the negative going peak. 
So somewhere on your probe, either on the probe connection end or on the probe itself, is going to be this compensation adjustment. So what you want to do is make sure that you use the little plastic doohickey that came with me. You generally don't want to adjust variable capacitors with the metal. And you just want to turn it. See, this is called undershoot. That's called overshoot. And we want to make those waveforms look as flat as possible. And then we say that our probe is compensated. So now that pretty much does the job for our hardware compensation, or hard hardware setup. What you want to do next, or maybe want to do next, I don't know, that's up to you, is go through and set up all your probes, all your different channels, make sure that each channel is working fine. Okay, now we're going to go into the display menu, and you can set your screen brightness and your uh, waveform intensity. Like for instance, uh, there's our back brightness set for zero and our intensity set for, you know, like 36%. To me, that doesn't look good. I want to be able to see everything, so I'm setting my intensity here up to 90 and then that grid brightness is for you guys up to about a hundred percent so that you can see it as well now there are other settings that you can go through on here in your utility setting you see we have IO settings for uh, LAN USB device GPIB uh, go back through here we have sound on and off whether or not you want to beep our language Pass fail, there's our system. It'll give you your system info. All of that good kind of stuff. Okay, so now we're set up. Let's have a little play with it. Now, one thing about these scopes is they are four channel, 50 megahertz, and a phenomenal price range. I mean, I think they're selling for about 350 on Amazon right now. If you don't have one, take a look in the links down below for my Amazon shop. I do have them available. I'm sure you've heard by now you can hack this to make it 100 megahertz. If you go to your utility menu and you go to options and installed, you can see a list of all the installed options. Now these days it comes with everything installed except for the 100 megahertz bandwidth it's simple to do so if we go to utility uh, system system info you will need your serial number take your serial number and punch it in at the website called riglaw.com eccentricworkshop.com I'll put a link down below pick the options you want and then you are going to go to options setup editor punch in the code it gives you hit apply and Bob's your uncle you'll have everything you've ever dreamed of in a hundred megahertz oscilloscope don't tell them I told you. Okay, so I said I'd show you. We'll have a quick play here. I'm going to disconnect the probe. And I'm going to hook up a coax from my function generator. It's got a 50 ohm terminator on there. You don't have a 50 ohm terminator at this point. It's really not going to hurt you too much. Don't worry about it. So we'll fire up the old function generator. And we'll get ourselves a nice sine wave. There we go. So my function generator is showing me what 210 hertz, 210 hertz, and uh, let's get some uh, let's get some measurements here. Do -do -do. 
Three cycle pulses, edges. Ah, vertical. Peak to peak. There we go. So we're looking at 17.6 volts. Peak to peak. Let's take that down to say like 5 volts. Now the reason I want to do that, and you really don't have to take it down. I'm just doing it to show you something here. 5.2, 5.4 is good. You are going to get the most resolution out of your scope when the waveform covers the entire screen. So now we're not quite there yet. So I'm just adjusting the function generator. That's not too bad. It's not. I know it's, it's not exactly centered, but you can see we're still at 210 hertz. If it's peak to peak, it jumped up to three. We just want to try and get it in there. You can use this little control right here to kind of center your wave. Whoa, hello. Kind of center your waveform. This is what I mean by having a play. Sometimes you've got to really get in there and adjust things. So that's 210 hertz. Multiply it by 10. Adjust our horizontal. Now we're at what? 2.12 kilohertz. Again we'll multiply it by 10. And we're 21.5 kilohertz. Multiply it by 10. Well, what's going on there? We got a unhappy, unhappy wire. Now we got 200 and 10 kilohertz. We'll take it up to the fastest speed this old guy has. And we'll crank our, yeah, we're all the way up. So we're looking at 2.10 megahertz. You can see there's a little funk on there, but that funk, watch this. That's just coming from this stuff. Let me take off the 50 ohm. Terminator. I mean, it is good practice to use that unless your scope has a 50 ohm mode, but uh, in this case, not going to make too big of a difference. Although it's making some noise. Yikes. <laughs> okay, what you're seeing there is what's called persistence. So if we go to display, persistence time. We set that for minimum. Yeah, hell, what you're seeing there is noise. This wire is worse off than I thought. Let's put our 50 on terminator back on there. Make sure everything's tight and copacetic. Yeah, that's better. That's a much better signal. Okay. So anyway, persistence is how long the stuff stays on the screen. And why do we ask about that? Now you can see a little bit of persistence as that waveform oscillates. See the glow around it? Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on some AM modulation on this signal. <laughs> Take a look at that. Let's hit, let's hit our auto set. See how you can see the actual waveform and then the persistence because the persistence is set for infinite. Well, we don't want that. Let's set our persistence time for about 100 milliseconds. We'll clear the screen. And if you look at that now, you can see the AM modulation there. You zoom in on that, you can probably see it even better. See how that's working? We adjust our persistence again. We can set it for minimum. And now you're just seeing the pure modulation. Pretty cool. These are great scopes. Of course, I'm not just hawking this scope. This is a, a little super short tutorial on setting up your new scope. Now, one other thing that I want to talk about and show you today is the FFT. So we are going to go to a square wave. I know that doesn't look much like a square wave, but when I go down here, it'll look a lot more like a square wave. 
There we go. So now we're at 21 kilohertz, 4 volts peak to peak. And if we come in here and we hit our math button, math, what do we want? We want FFT. And we'll turn it on. And what we have now is a pseudo spectrum analyzer. Now it's not going to work as well as a real spectrum analyzer, but most of your modern digital oscilloscopes offer this function and you can use it. So just a quick video today on setting up your new scope. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons, and a big thanks to you guys for watching and helping grow the channel. We're at almost 70,000 subscribers. My goal for this year is to get to 100,000. Well, my goal for 2020 is to get to 100,000 subscribers, and I need your help. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, please hit it now. So, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. That's it. I'm out. Peace.